Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods and part two of finishing off our bedroom downstairs in the basement so that we can finally move in and spend the first night in our house. Tonight we just have to finish a few things. We've got just the rest of the trim to finish down where they put the carpet. We've got the closet door to install, the egress step to get out, and then literally just moving in furniture. So without further ado, I'm just gonna get started and we're gonna get this project finished.
right, everybody, that is it. We got everything done. Now, there's still some things that Erin wants to do, like she wants to do something behind the bed, uh, and this bed's not gonna stay, so this room does feel a little bit cramped, but once again, this is like uh, bigger than our master bedroom in our old house. So king size bed can fit in here no problem, but uh, it definitely doesn't need to be a king size bed. If we end up keeping this guy, we'll pull it on upstairs and continue to use it. Or maybe we'll go in the other spare bedroom. Not that the other spare bedroom is any bigger than this, depending how I big I make the closet, etc. cetera. But, but yeah, it's not 100% permanent. So we still wanna put a headboard behind the bed. We've got brand new sheets, but unfortunately the protective thing that was over this mattress Basically, it's just destroyed. Uh, we're just gonna throw it away because it's been dragged through uh, the storage place, uh, on and off my truck and trailer, down here in the basement. It just got way too dusty and dirty. So put a brand new protector over it. We may get like a three inch pillow top. We've had that before. And then we'll throw our new sheets on here and uh, we'll actually get to spend a night in here maybe at another time because this thing is probably way too dusty and stuff and I don't want to lay on that or ruin brand new sheets with like uh, any dust or possibly any fiberglass that might have fallen from the ceiling and actually got into the mattress. I want a protective cover over it. Uh, a few other things, closet door, freaking perfect as always. I'm really good at hanging doors. Not to toot my own horn, but I really love a solid, solid fitting door. And they just, they, they're so tight. And if you adjust the striker plate out a little bit, there's an internal piece in there that you can bend out a little bit. That makes the striker a little bit tighter. So that way your doors don't rattle and stuff. Just makes for a way better install. Did have to put one of these uh, door stoppers on though. I got a two pack off of Amazon. I'll link everything down below that I get. But uh, that way when this door opens, it's not smashing in uh, to that dresser or that nightstand. And then obviously the other one goes over here for the, uh, the main door. And again, that protects it because uh, the door handle was hitting there. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but it still sounds a little echoey in here. Uh, very weird that like when in the last video, I would come in here and it would echo like crazy. But the second we step out here, how drastically the sound changes on camera because all of this is like insulated. And I guess you've got more grooves and stuff instead of like fat uh, flat walls to uh, bounce everything back. What is that noise? Right when we're talking about noise, we're hearing something. Oh, that kind of sucks for whoever lives in this bedroom. We may have to do it sometime at night. It's almost like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And however many times our uh, water treatment does its like uh, daily or weekly cleaning that you can hear it go through right now, the purge line up through here is going all the way up right over top of through that bedroom. And even though we have 5 eighths drywall, the acoustic sealant, and then 5 eighths tongue and groove up there, you can hear the water purging through, I think it's, it's this line right here. It's purging through that line that the well drillers put in and it's going right through that bedroom and then 90ing on that back wall. So you can kind of hear the water purging through the line and then 90ing over here somewhere and then going over towards the uh, sump pump and dropping down in. So may have to turn that on or recalibrate that so it's like on during a daytime or something when somebody's not sleeping or that thing goes on for like an hour and just dumps water through there as it's doing its like regen cycle. That kind of sucks. It's not that loud. I don't know if it's picking up, but you can't hear it. But anyway, as for sound or minus sound, Aaron still wants to do a few more things in here. So I'm sure there's knickknacks and stuff that we'll buy. We'll hang stuff on the wall. TV, we got to mount it. It does not fit our dresser. We got a 55 inch new TV for in here. So I had to buy a bracket that we're actually gonna bolt to the wall. So this thing isn't sitting there. Hey guys, so I do have a little bit more of this video. Uh, our TV bracket showed up. Got it on Amazon last night at like 10 o'clock at night and it showed up at like five in the morning. On sale for only 30 bucks and uh, it can hold up to 135 pounds, which this TV is nowhere near that. But super simple install. You just bolt uh, these two pieces together here. This bracket's already on this side. These four screws, two on the top and two on the bottom, bolt the right side onto it. And then the bracket itself just bolts into the TV. It comes with all necessary mounting hardware for pretty much every type of TV. They got long and they got skinny and they got short and fat, etc. with a washer kit. And uh, one of the short fat ones ends up working for our TV. But you do have to put a spacer in there because the screw bottoms out on the back of the bracket on side of the TV. And then these are loose. So with just a little bit of a spacer, 
spaces it out, it's bolted on perfectly. And the way this guy works is you just set the TV up in the bracket like that. And these clips kind of are spring loaded. They basically lock in so the bottom can't come off. But once it's uh, held up under weight, it just kind of sits in and locks in in here. And these just keep it again from falling off. Super easy design, real easy to install. Now, I don't think technically I have to hit a stud because this is 5 8 tongue and groove walling here. So even if I don't hit a stud, it's still locked into a piece of 5 8 uh, lumber. And I think we used 5 8 drywall also. So these massive bolts that they come with, they would be able to probably hold this on because if this was shiplap, shiplap technically could maybe pull away from the wall because it's basically just overlapping like wood as opposed to tongue and groove that actually locks in so you can't just pull an individual board off of this wall because it's locked in below and it's locked in above but I know from this outlet right here we've got a stud right here so 48 inches over drill a pilot hole send this guy through with the bracket then we'll get it level and again whether we hit a stud or not I don't think it's that important I definitely hit stud. All right, it looks sweet. Now I just want to get another outlet up here because the cord is no longer long enough. And we've got a stud right here that I just punched a hole from the backside so I know where to come out at. But right about here basically is going to be another outlet. Hopefully it shouldn't interfere with anything. I'll put it a little bit low and you shouldn't be able to see it with the dresser in the way or with the TV in the way, but I'm gonna get a box, gonna mount it back here. Then we'll use our all purpose tool and we'll basically just punch out on uh, this side coming in from the backside. Wire it up and then we should be done. But it fits the space quite nicely. Again, I don't think there's anything else we got to do. All of the boards, trim, everything looks beautiful. I can't wait to actually finish the entire house. I love it so freaking much. Everything just looks so freaking good in here. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up tonight here. I'm going to let uh, that sealant down there adhere. Then we'll get those weights out of here. Might wrap this video up here again or see if there's anything else that we can do. And then we'll go from there. So until next time, I hope you guys really enjoy this video. We do still have to finish in here, don't forget. Some people even brought up to the comment uh, maybe some wallpaper that we can do in here. So we would still have to sand down uh, the mud and stuff, but uh, we may be able to put up some sort of wallpaper that would be easy to do. And then, oh, as I'm looking in here, because of the thickness of the door jam, I do have to make like a jam extension. I can't just run like a uh, three and a half inch piece over this way. I've got to have basically something fill in the gap from here to that. So we need some sort of uh, door jam extension. But again, I'm gonna start editing this video. I'm gonna see what else we need to be able to do. Again, may wrap it up here, I may not. But if I do, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.